Sub postmasters are still being chased by the post office to thousands of pounds due to continuing faults with that Horizon IT system. It's just incredible, isn't it, to think it's still going on. For sub postmaster Jacqueline Franklin, the scandal's now in its second generation after her mother Lillian's final years were tarnished by repeated unexplained shortfalls. Well, we'll speak to her in just a moment. But since Lillian died in 2019, Jacqueline says she's paid back thousands of pounds. It adds another complex layer to the scandal. In 2017, the Horizon system was updated. Well, two years later, the landmark Bates versus Post Office ruling found the software contained bugs and errors, but added the system was now robust after the update. Five years on, sub-sub postmasters claim they're still being pursued for mystery shortfalls. And Jacqueline joins us from her post office in Warwick this morning. Here in the studio, we've got Nick Wallace, the author of the great post office scandal, who consulted on the ITV drama Mr Bates versus the post office. We'll ask Nick for the wider context um, in a second. But first of all, just to, to, um, to welcome Jacqueline to the show. Thank you so much for coming Morning. and talking to us today. Your mum, Lillian, um, you were telling us um, she, she ran the post office for over 40 years. And when she suddenly passed away in her 70s, you took over um, from her. But in the final um, period of her public service in that post office in, um, you know, where you grew up, she was facing these, the, these terrible worries and concerns about the books not balancing and she was having to use her own money to make up the shortfalls. How was that for you and for, for her? And how do you feel looking back on what was going on in those final uh, years for her? They said it was human error and she thought mistakes were being made um, by them. So hours were spent getting out paperwork, double checking paperwork, double checking everything, cash, stock, because she was convinced that something had gone wrong um, with something that they had done. So she spent many, many hours um, with the monthly accounts trying to work out where things had gone, taking paperwork home, looking at it the next day. Um, it worried her. She was putting money in so much so that she landed up um, with the post office um, being substituted by her wages and her living on her pension because uh, she just thought it was something they had done. When she passed away in, in 2019, I think she was 76, did she have any idea that so many other um, people were in the same situation as her? Did she, did she understand that or, or did she feel uh, um, alone? She uh, was aware of the um, shortfall system that, which was going on with um, a prosecution. She decided not to go down that because she was worried that she'd have to go to court. We explained to her that somebody would represent her. But at that age, um, she didn't quite comprehend that it wouldn't be her which would be up in court. I just, I'm so um, sorry. So that. she declined it. Because I know that she had motor neuron disease, didn't she? She had a terminal illness and in her yeah. last years of her life was still trying to sort all this out and just such an awful thing to have yeah. to, to go through. It just must have been horrific for her. It was, because we were backwards and forwards to hospital doctors trying to get a diagnosis uh, for the disease. She was losing weight. Um, she was feeling really, really ill, but she kept it hidden people congratulating her on weight loss. Um, and she was trying to carry on because that was her belief that you didn't take time off, you didn't close because she was scared of closing. She didn't even close when it snowed um, because she thought she'd got to be here because that's what she always understood with the contract. The thing, I think she didn't realise that... Sorry, Jacqueline. I think the thing which will be shocking for our viewers is... Um, you know, because we've all seen the television programme and we're thinking this must be something in, in the past and something that, that your mum dealt with. But you are, have still been dealing with shortfalls which are unexplained, still dealing with problems with the Horizon computer system in, in recent years. It's still happening now, is that right? It's still happening. It's uh, the other day churned out three receipts, turned itself off um, whilst a clerk was serving. And that's happened three times now, recently. Um, and you're trying to serve with a screen which suddenly turns itself off. And it's like, what's happened? 
um, you know, we don't know. And then you're trying to log back in again, get the receipt for the transaction and marry it up with paperwork to try and see if it's gone through. Uh, on one occasion, we definitely found out there was no record of the transaction. So that was remotely looked at um, and they couldn't see that the transaction had taken place either. So what happens with the post office then when you're, when you're flagging this up and you're saying there are these shortfalls, but obviously they're not, you know, they're, they're nothing that you can, you can say has happened? Because you'd think from what's happened in the past that they would be understanding and that they would, they would be sympathetic about it. They have changed their attitude with the help desk. They are slightly more helpful. But I get emails saying the problem has been resolved, they've closed the case, when in fact we've had cases which still need looking at. Um, and I phoned up the other day and disputed something because they closed it down and it clearly wasn't right. OK, well, let's, let's go over to Nick now. I mean, Nick, this is, it is shocking, isn't it? You know, we've all... Uh, seen the drama, we've uh, watched the documentaries, we know about what's going on, and it, it, it has been a national scandal. How is this still happening now, that people like Jacqueline are having to pay money out of their pockets to make up these shortfalls? Well, Horizon has been upgraded, as you say, since 2017, but that doesn't mean it's infallible. Robust does not mean infallible. The judgment of 2019 said that Horizon must still contain bugs, errors and defects which have the potential to cause problems with branch accounts. That is clearly what is happening. The problem that the post office has got, since the introduction of the Horizon IT system, it hasn't been able to tell the difference between fraud and IT error. And it still can't. And the sub-postmaster is in a really difficult position whereby contractually they are responsible for their branch accounts, but they're not in control of them. Horizon is in the control of the post office and Fujitsu, so they're not in control of their own accounts. Now, the attitude has changed, and you are hearing from the top that the post office is changing the way it approaches things. But unless sub-postmasters start speaking up about the problems that they're getting, get representation and mm. push back against the post office and say, look, you, according to this judgment, this big 2019 judgment, you now have to prove that these errors are my responsibility. And if the post office can't do that, it should be writing them off. But the problem that they've got hanging over them is that the post office can remove the office of sub-postmaster from anyone it chooses to. So that's why a lot of them are just making up the shortfalls. How many more do you think there could be, like Jacqueline, then, who have just been making up the shortfalls, who are encountering shortfalls on a regular basis? Well, there are thousands of sub-post offices and the Horizon system touches them all. This is a complex, sprawling ecosystem, this IT network. Mm. It's going to have errors within it. And so we could be talking hundreds. We, we know that there are three that have gone on the record other than Jacqueline in the past few weeks. I filmed with a chap called uh, Steve Phillips in South Wales, who basically had a £4,000 discrepancy that he, he went to the post office and said, look, this is nothing to do with me. And eventually the post office wrote it off. But that was because he had strong backing and strong representation. So just to understand, Nick, just to be kind of clear about this, what you're saying is that now, unless the post office can prove its fraud... Then the, the or carelessness, negligence or error on the postmaster's Then it's side. not the postmaster's um, fault and they shouldn't be putting their money in to make up shortfalls. Absolutely, but the problem is you've got this asymmetry of power. The post office has all the cards. It has the legal firepower. It has the debt recovery department. So postmasters are on their own. They're working 19 to the dozen, often for very little money. They don't have time to get the representation and get the legal backing that they need to fight back against this. There's, there is a real problem here. But what about the challenge for the government? I mean, the government has now suddenly stepped in and said, we're going to pay compensation. But shouldn't the government also be saying, as the main shareholder to the post office, you've got to change the way you go about this. Is there a change the government can tell the post office to do which would make things better now? Yes, but the problem is there is money disappearing out of the network and no one knows where it's going. It could be fraud, it could be employee theft, it could be organised crime gangs robbing uh, uh, the cash machines, it could be computer error. They cannot get to the bottom of this, but leaning on sub-postmasters to make up losses within their accounts without proof that it's definitely their fault is wrong. Yeah, on an ongoing basis. OK, Thank Nick, you. thanks very much. And Jacqueline, just briefly for you, I mean, you know, this must have been horrific for you. How would you sum up the impact that this has had on your life? It's changed Mum's life. 
Um, so much so that, you know, living off a of pension later in life and thinking that she's got to continue to the end was horrific to watch. Um, for me, it was a case that the day she died, I took over. And with the mindset of the post office was that you just carried on regardless. Um, so I've had no time off to grieve or anything. We've just carried on. Um, and it needs resetting. It needs resetting the relationship with the post office and postmasters. And we definitely need more money for what we're doing. Okay. We're just not being paid enough Thank to you. live, basically. Thank you. Thank you. Jacqueline, we will put that point that this still needs resetting to the government minister, Tom Tugendhat, from the Home Office when you speak to him in an hour's time. And thank you to you for sharing your story and also to Nick Wallace for um, his brilliant thank campaigning you. journalism over, over many years, bringing this to, um, to light and helping craft the ITV documentary. It's, it's, it's the courage of you which has made this difference. A post office spokesman said to us, the current version of the Horizon system introduced from, 20, from 2017 was found to be robust relative to comparable systems, but they say we are not at all complacent about that and we continue to work with our postmasters to identify and invest in improvements. Current postmasters who have concerns about today's Horizon system are encouraged to raise these with us so that we can help.